Thank you for joining us today for our live talk, Healing Through Sport. We are joined by renowned basketball player Pauline Ekambi. A warm welcome to you all and to Pauline. Um, by means you. of a Thank quick you. Thank you. By means of a quick introduction into Pauline's impressive journey, uh, Pauline launched her career as a top basketball player when she was just 18, being selected for the French senior team. Uh, throughout her career, she's participated in five European championships. She was French junior champion in 1981, three times French champion in 1980, 1983 and 1984. She's participated in two Olympics qualifying tournaments in 1980 and 1988, and she graced the cover of L'Equipe, the national French sports magazine, at just 19 years old, the first woman to do so across all sports. And in 2012, she was inducted into the French Basketball Hall of Fame. She has also received a number of awards and merits. Notably, in 2021, she was decorated with the Ordre National du Mérite by the French Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports. And in 2023, she was awarded the Athlete for Peace Medal. Um, she's a record woman of French team caps, having the highest number of team selections and is one of France's all-time top scorers with an impressive 2,321 points across her international career. So she's truly an emblematic sportswoman in France and internationally, so we're very lucky to be joined by her. Today, among a number of other social commitments, she is also co-founder and president of Sporttel Community, which aims to connect top athletes with companies, helping them make efficient career changes. She provides services about advising and supporting companies that wish to communicate through the lens of sport. And she helps share her vast knowledge in the benefits of sport for social change, individual development, and goal setting at large. Um, we are also having her today to discuss her new book published in 2024, My Promesse en Héritage. In it, Pauline explains how she was able to cope with the mental health demands of top level sport and at the same time her journey through trauma having been a victim of incest in her childhood. So we're going to discuss some of these themes today, the importance of sport uh, for personal and individual development, the role it plays in reappropriating one's body and autonomy after trauma and reinforcing the mental through the physical. Um, so Pauline, without further ado, I think we shall get into our live talk. Um, my first question for you was, um, with your recently launched book, Ma Promesse en Héritage, um, just tell us a little bit about what motivated you to write and to share your story publicly. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Agathe. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, when I was, uh, uh, I was uh, 14 uh, and a half uh, when I entered to the sports study basketball program at INSEP, I was super happy. My future was full of hope. Later uh, that same year, my life would become a, a living hell as my father would incest me until I was 18. I talked to my mother about it. She was totally indifferent. At the age of uh, 16, I contemplated suicide, but I was lucky enough to have the support of my coaches at, INSEP, at the INSEP and uh, I decided uh, to immerse myself fully in basketball to escape this terror. There was no way I was going to be a victim. That's what I thought deep inside myself, my head. At 14, I was a victim because the fight was unfair against my father. He was stronger than me. Uh, my father had taken uh, over my body, but not my head. Deep down, I had made myself a promise that as an adult, I would face my parents, adult to adult, on equal terms, which I did, and it felt very good. Then I went uh, from survivor to warrior. I've always written and I always wanted to turn my personal story in a, into a battle. But before I could write the book, My Promesse on Heritage, I had to overcome a long, hairy, and very painful process of reconstruction. By 2019, I had started writing my manuscript. I was taking my time. Then, one day, something clicked. I, uh, I saw a petition form from, from uh, uh, France 
incest uh, to abolish the statute of limitation. And then I was very shocked to discover that 6.7 million French people claim uh, to be victims of incest, which corresponds to 10% of French uh, population. 78% uh, are women and 22% were men. And uh, one child per 10 children per class. That was a uh, big talk. I was really driven on the uh, uh, um, it stand out, you know. And 30% uh, of the French people say they know at least one victim of incest in their circle. And 29% of them say that the victim they know is in themselves. Uh, that's not counting those who haven't yet declared themselves and those who have committed suicide. How many predators the, the, does that make? Mathematically, several hundred thousand. So the child rapists are here among us. They have set up a veritable machine to suppress the truth, as I say, and uh, they have done irrepar irreparable damage for generations. We are faced with a veritable social scourge. I uh, was so furious at this scourge, which affects all strata of society, that I invited my followers on Facebook to sign the petition. I didn't realize when I informing them of this staggering failure, sorry, that I included myself in them with the phrase, I'm one of them. The next day, when I wanted to know how many people had signed the petition, I discovered many messages, mostly from the world of sport, who were surprised to discover that I had lived through such a tragedy. It must be said that I hadn't told anyone except a few close friends. Then everything accelerated. The young tradition who helped me write my book had asked me if I would accept to talk about my story in Lickie, sports newspaper, where she was a journalist and grand reporter before retiring a few months later. I accepted during this interview, which came out in February uh, 2000, uh, 2021, I also talked about my current book project. Okay, well, That's thank you very party. much. <laughs> That's how it started. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for giving us that introduction and how it all started. Um, so as a former top basketball player, how do you think sport helped shape your personal story and cope with the trauma? What were the dynamics at play? What was it about the sport that helped you um, through this journey? I'm often asked uh, how I managed uh, to cope with the mental demands of top level sport and at the same time, the hell of incest. In reality, sport was tremendous opportunity I seized to escape my toxic, toxic sorry, family and reinvent myself. My power to live of the, my power of to live was a, uh, was stronger than anything else. I put my heart and soul into sport to free myself from the physical and psychological hold of my toxic parents. What's more, the dopamine, the adrenaline, the feeling of immense freedom, the confidence that grew within me as I progressed. Uh, on the basketball sport. The educational uh, framework that the sport provides uh, with me, all carried by the strength of the collective, had a significant and powerful impact on my emotional reconstruction process and the reappropriation of my body. I drew my resilience, my assertiveness, my empowerment, and my mindset from basketball with an iron will to never let my aggressor win all the mission. I think that's a really admirable way of looking at it and how you've described before how you 
yes, you may have started out as a victim, but now you see yourself as a warrior and this is your journey with how you've come to terms with it. And this is your battle. And now coming to terms with it as an adult, um, you're taking on this mission. Um, I think it's yeah. it's also really interesting what you say about the power of the collective, the the support network that sport can provide yeah. you with between your team players, your coaches, and all of that. I think that's really important when facing um, a journey as troubling yeah. as this one, uh, the strength yeah. in the community and resilience building through that. Um, so yeah. my next question was, what would be the key messages uh, that you wish to convey through your book project? And in what ways do you hope your book will inspire others to speak out? Because as you said, when you first started on this journey, it's a topic that's very difficult to talk about for people. Um, it can be very problematic uh, in terms of how it affects your personal and your professional life if you choose to come out and talk about these things that have happened to you. Um, so yeah, what, what ways do you hope it will inspire people? Uh, as I say, I like to say that uh, basketball is much more than a sport and uh, a high level sport is much more than uh, glory and medal. Uh, sport can play a significant significant role in uh, incentive exchange, uh, rebuilding, uh, rebuilding process, empowerment, individual uh, fulfillment and establish cognitive social bonds with others sharing similar interests which can be crucial to their emotional recovery. Uh, sport can give incest uh, survivors a sense of empowerment and control over their body, uh, contrasting with the feeling of powerlessness often associated with traumatic experiences. Sport has the power to change life, to save my life. So, um, today, I've chosen to align my life with the fight against incest rather than avert uh, my gaze from the suffering of child, uh, children. I've turned uh, my trauma into a battle to give hope to victims that they can recover by integrating sport into their healing process and to raise society awareness of this court with effect one child per class of 10 pupils, as I said earlier, and 10% uh, of the French population. Uh, in my case, I was uh, 14 and a half, in, it was in 1976. We are in uh, 2024. Society is only uh, just beginning to listen and come out of denial, but we still have a justice system that's walking on its head. <laughs> uh, the Me Too movement has accelerated uh, the liberation of speech, and that's a good thing for shaking the thing up. However, the justice system needs to act much faster than, than that, because when you look at the figures, it becomes urgent to act as this, this is, um, public health issue. I hope that my book uh, will help others to feel free to speak out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think what you say about sport and how you hope that it um, helps people come through these journeys is definitely true. Like, I think sport has a really unique ability to transcend linguistic, cultural and social barriers, and it makes it an excellent platform for strategies of inclusion and adaptation. And as you said, it brings it, it breaks down a lot of these barriers in terms of um, individual and social development, fosters people to come together, the sense of community that we've spoken about already. Um, I think it can also really help yeah. with reducing stigma and discrimination and transforming community attitudes. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely very, very important. And what you say about the justice system and transforming how we act on these issues afterwards leads into my next question. Um, which is uh, how can we all contribute to protect children and to fight family violence and these kinds of issues in society? What um, ideas would you have in mind um, for how we can bring about this change? Well, uh, the voices of little boys and girls who are victims of incest are still too often silenced by society and the justice system. Together, we, adults, 
have the power to give them a voice. The fight uh, to fight and force recognition of this crime, yes, because it is a crime, it's even to learn uh, it's even the total innovation of the child which shattered entire lives. Failure to act quickly is in a tantamount, tantamount, I, I don't know if you understand that, uh, what I mean, uh, uh, to failing to assist the child in danger. Uh, the justice system uh, needs to change. It is far too complacent uh, toward aggressors and their partners in crime. Uh, we need to change the law to help victims. We need more and more voices to be uh, raised so that fear change size. Uh, let's be sentinels to protect the integrity of our children for their well-being because they are our promise for the future. Small individual uh, action cumulatively become great collective victory to contribute to a better world. This is the battle we must wage together today for a newfound humanity. That's a, a really inspiring way to, to finish um, on that question. Um, just a reminder to all of our participants listening, you can ask questions in the, uh, in the chat or in the question and answer uh, function of this Zoom call, so don't hesitate to do that now. Um, but yeah, following up on on your answer, I think um, you're right. There's a, a definitely a big uh, community change that needs to happen. Um, and as we get more uh, freedom of speech and liberation of speech, it's now more turning into a question of what do we do now to accompany these people who've been through these uh, traumatic experiences and, and what can be done? Um, so we'll just leave it a few minutes for some questions. If people have any, please don't hesitate. Um, if not, uh, I believe we have reached the end of our live talk. Um, thank you for having uh, addressed all of our questions and for spending time with us today to talk about this really important subject. We really appreciate it. Um, I can, uh, I can answer to all the questions, so please feel free because it's very important because I, I believe every one of us, um, has at least one person close to us who is uh, who is victim or has been a victim, and probably it's important to know how uh, to support to, them to, to support them by yeah. listening to them um, and to probably uh, uh, advise them to see a specialist um, because we cannot answer uh, if it, if it, uh, for sure. It is a very touchy and um, um, subject. Uh, it can be emotional uh, to listen to a friend, close friend, who has been close, uh, to have been, uh, who has been victim of this uh, uh, crime. And it's very important for you to uh, listen to them. Mm -hmm. uh, listening is very important uh, because uh, when we are victims, when we're young, nobody, I mean, in my case, no adult listen to me and until I had my coach to do so. And uh, it's a real, really, uh, it was so great to have somebody to listen, to believe us. And um, it's a part of the construction too. So don't hesitate to ask the question. We, we have one question now. Um, so this person says, we hear you, thank you. How can businesses and brands help to break the stigma and encourage dialogue and action about both incest and the power of sport? They have a major role to, to do, all, all of us. Uh, when I say society, it's, it's us, you, me, uh, companies, uh, uh, the people, the person has a, a big role, a major role to, to, uh, to, to play. Uh, on this battle, um, it's good to have a referent, uh, you know, like yeah, a, a reference, yeah, a, a reference. It could be the, the, the RH or it could be uh, somebody specifically a uh, social expert to yeah, uh, men to, mentoring to, systems or yes, mentoring an systems like like uh, for any kind of violence because there's also uh, violence, physical violence or 
or all kinds of trauma that uh, people can go through, they have to be able to talk to somebody uh, in the company and the company can uh, hire that type of expert uh, in, uh, in, in, their, in their company. I think also um, companies in the way that they promote the wellness uh, and well-being of their exactly. employees to uh, exactly. promoting sport programs for their employees, activities to do um, yes. can also be a great way to foster inclusion and participation. They do, um, so, they do so, but uh, they have to go further than uh, mm -hmm. just the well-being by the sport because sport is not enough. Sport helps a lot. But it's important to guarantee to guarantee the the listening the uh, Yeah, yeah. Right. It's very very important. Absolutely. Um, to help um, the employees, and the sport is is a, is a plus. And so it's also about uh, mental. Uh, uh, well being and that's something about that health. Mental yeah, health. mental health. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. have uh, one more question. Um, yeah. So, how did your family react when you brought this uh, incest trauma into the public? Well, or did you find that your family was there to support you? Or <laughs> how, uh, I, I I have my uh, older brother. Uh, he definitely supported me, and. Uh, uh, um, I don't care about the the part of my family who uh, the, the, I don't care about uh, what they think because it's not against my family that I I'm doing this. But uh, another half uh, I mean uh, the other part of my family on my father's side or my mother's side they support me they support me a lot. They read the book. They uh, really were proud of me and my courage my strength to do so. And so, of course, there's always uh, um, the other part of the family who want support, but I, I didn't even think about them. Yeah. They, weren't, they, uh, were yeah. Not, they didn't help me when I was, uh, I asked uh, help when uh, I was younger. So I, and for me, I cut with uh, the toxic part of my family. Right. Yeah. No, as we already said before, it can be difficult to come forward with these with these issues and share our journey when we're not sure. sure how it's going to be received. And I think when you're part of a vulnerable population, such as being a child and not having access to, um, you know, having your voice heard properly, taken seriously, you don't know how to touch upon these subjects. It can be even more complicated. Um, the, 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 absolutely. the more important, the most, uh, the more uh, for me, uh, to me, the, the, what's more important is you, me, and my well-being, my uh, uh, belief, my uh, determination. Uh, family, uh, you can choose a, a family. I, I, I have a family of heart, and uh, it's not only my family of blood, because it's a matter of love. And if uh, 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 part of the family is toxic, you have to cut with them. It's not uh, for them. It's not uh, have to be done against them. And uh, it wasn't uh, in my case. I didn't do it against them. I uh, was happy. I could face my parents when I was an adult, to adult, and uh, um, because that's the promises I made to that young girl that I was. And uh, as I said, I was strong enough. And I transform my trauma as a strength. I always uh, uh, turn into positive aspect every uh, uh, difficulties uh, difficulties of life. Uh, it helps to grow, to develop yourself. You know your strength. Yeah. So we all face uh, difficulties in life, and we have to face it to get over it. It's very important. Uh, not to, to to do so. So that's the most important thing to is thinking about yourself. And yeah. Why you're doing the things and for whom you're doing it and to really take the best out of any any difficulties in life. And for that sport, it's really 
same portion that has an insignificant impact for them. So I well, encourage you not to play com high competitions, of course, but I encourage you to practice uh, to, to to practice uh, to have a physical activity and uh, to put sports into your your uh, personal development and uh, self confidence and uh, to get over all the difficulties that you may face or that you are facing in your life. Well, I think that's a very great way to end our talk. Uh, to leave it on a very motivational and inspirational uh thought um i thank you for encouraging everyone here and um showing and sharing your journey and what you've been through um and what the role of sports has been in your life um and thank you for all of the work that you continue doing today it's very very important um and it's been a real pleasure getting to discuss this with you and explore it a bit further um and no, thank you I to all of to... yeah oh, sorry, no, sorry go ahead yeah. to... I wanted to thank uh, all of you, all of you guys and girls, uh, to for your sensitivity of this uh, uh, touchy subject, for your uh, commitment into the battle, because your support is uh, uh, your precious support. Trust me, is uh, giving me more strength and and uh, encouraging me more to this battle, to continue this battle. Thank you all, to all of you. We are glad to be able to help in any way we can. And as we said, yes, we've highlighted we it's very yes, important. We do, we do by uh -huh. being there, we contribute a lot. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. So we will end our live talk here. Again, thank you everyone for joining. This recording will be available on our Women's Forum YouTube. So don't hesitate to go back and have a look or share it further if you wish. Uh, and stay tuned to hear about uh, the other upcoming live talks that we have coming up and other events. Thank Merci. you, everyone. Merci Bye. Thank you very much. Bye.